of gentleman who is driven by three core components, knowledge, action, and care. As the chairman of the Piramal Group, he really has redefined its purpose as doing well and doing good by making a positive difference in the world all over us. So let's welcome onto this stage one half of the power couple, one that has been the force behind the staggering rise of the Piramal Group. With a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Ajay Piramal. <laughs> The author, Ms. Gunjan Jain, our hosts for this evening, Deepak and Nita, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Since it's all about launching of a book, I thought it would be best if I began with a story. This story is about a young girl in a village in Maharashtra, uh, who was born about 70 years ago. She was named Sindhu Sapkal. And Sindhu Sapkal, at the age of six, was very keen to go to school. But coming and being born in an impoverished family, her parents felt it was necessary for her to look after a few of the water buffaloes that they had. And so, every day her job was to take these buffaloes, graze them, and let them swim in the water. Whilst they were submerged in the water, and you know water buffaloes can be submerged for several hours, Sindhu went to school. But she was always late at school, thanks to her buffaloes, and was always beaten up by her teacher. While she was at school, the buffaloes went into others' territories. And then she was beaten up by the farmers. Yet, she felt that it was the best part of her childhood. Sindhu Thai, childhood actually ended at the age of 10, when she was married to somebody who was 20 years her senior. And by the age of 20, she had already had three sons and was expecting a fourth child. At that time in this village in Maharashtra, there was a mafia goon who was exploiting the villagers and making them work as slaves. Sindhu Thai could not tolerate this and complained to the district collector. And that was enough for this criminal to actually go and spread a lie about Sindhu Thai. He went to her husband and said that she was unfaithful and cheating upon him, that she was having an affair. In fact, she, he said she was having an affair with himself. And the child that she carried was not her husband's, but of the goon. This infuriated her husband, and he beat her, kicked her on the stomach till she fell unconscious. He thought, she was dead, and therefore threw her body in a cow shed full of animals. At that time, she was lying unconscious in a corner, but there was a gentle cow who actually stood on her and protected her from being trampled by the other animals. Sindhutai delivered a daughter and she cut the umbilical cord by just taking a sharp rock. Once the baby was born, Sindhu Thai decided to go to her parents. But as you know, it's the tradition 
at least in India at that time, particularly in the villages, that if a girl leaves her husband, there is no place for her in her mother's place. And so she was thrown out, homeless, penniless. She was worried about all the scandal that could take place or, or the abuse that could take place with her and so decided that the safest place for her was to be at a crematorium. There nobody would come and attempt to molest her. So there she lived in a crematorium without any food, hardly any means of survival. When she was desperate for food, she would get some flour, mix it with water, and the way she cooked it was on the burning human corpses. She was really fed up, very, very disappointed, and wanted to commit suicide several times. And at one time, she went to do the, this act. She said that she would throw herself and her daughter in front of a running train. But when she went there to the station, she heard a loud groan. And when she followed it, she found that this was, here was an old, helpless man who was actually struggling to even keep alive. He was so hungry and sick. Sindhutai thought that this was, in fact, a call from God that she should help the helpless. And rather than committing suicide, resolved that her life would be to improve those who are helpless. Thinking what she could do, she was sitting under a branch of a tree. This tree had been really cut by a woodcutter, and therefore this branch that was hanging was on a splinter. But the branch still protected and gave shade to her and her daughter. And that was her inspiration. Her inspiration was that even if you have a broken body, even if you are hurt, you can still give help to the, those who really need it. And she felt the calling from God was that she should give shelter and help to those who really needed it. And hence decided to form, to get orphans and look after them. So she started collecting orphans uh, she collected often, she begged, she sang, and would look after them and care for them. Soon, her actually name spread, and some pious people did give, built a shelter. And there, Sindhutai gave people the love, the care, and the education that she had never got in her youth. And you'll be surprised, she's still living, that more than 1,000 of such orphans she brought up. And so many of them have become doctors, engineers, teachers, and so on. And Sindhutai continues to work. But as she says, that perhaps the most significant achievement, she would say, a memorable event in her life was that once when she was looking up, she was in her home, there, decades after she had been thrown out of her own home, came a man who was dying, who was sick, who was homeless and hungry. She recognized that man. It was her unmerciful husband who had beaten her and driven her out. And she looked after him. She took him on, not as her husband, but as her child. And that is what is the amazing story of a lady called Sindhutai Sapkal. For your information, the daughter who was born 
in the uh, cow shed, became a doctor, and two of her sons became doctorates and achieved PhD. So now, when she, and now I'm going to quote what she says when she spoke somewhere. When difficulties come, she says, we should stand and rise above them. So they look small. Don't be afraid to go ahead and fight. This was my life, she concludes. My path was full of thorns. So I made friends with those thorns. And my life became simple and beautiful. As she says, my path was full of thorns. So I made friends with those thorns and my life became simple and beautiful. <laughs> the 24 stories that are in this book are really other examples of outstanding women from all walks of life. Some of them were born in privilege. Some of them married into privilege and others have achieved it. I can say that I claim to know many of those who are featured in the book closely. But still, I think Gunjan has done an excellent job of actually bringing out things which I never knew about some people whom I thought I was close to. So Gunjan, you've done a tremendous job to bring out what is the best uh, in all these very accomplished women. And the number of people that you've interviewed, and really I also didn't know some things what people said about my own wife, so I can imagine what <laughs> you have. So congratulations, I think. It's not a normal book. It, the importance of this book is not only is it an inspiration for women, but it's also an inspiration for all mankind and all men as well, because these are amazing achievements. In our own culture, if you look at it, the role of women has been extremely important. If you were to just look at the realm of spirituality, it says that devotees seek to attain the divine grace. Every devotee strives to attain divine grace. And actually this grace originates in Shakti or the feminine form or the feminine quality of the Supreme. And this is what you have really highlighted. And really, Female divinity in some ways comes before that of male in any which way. And I just want to end, just think of it. How do we call our gods? We call them Lakshmi Vishnu. You don't call Vishnu and Lakshmi. You call them Radha Krishna. You call them Sita Ram. And it is said that if you have to get to Vishnu, you have to first please Lakshmi. So with that, I wish you all the best.